These are five teachers that you're going to meet on your spiritual awakening journey. Hi, my name is Simone. I'm the Zen Mommy, and I'm here to help expand your consciousness and help you embrace your divinity that you are creator God. So in your experience of awakening to who you truly are, you will come in contact with all five of these teachers at one time or another. And the first teacher that I'd like to talk about, I'm sorry, I'm looking down because, you know, I have it in my phone. <laughs> Just in case I forget. Okay, so the first teacher that will come into your life, one of the first, you know, not necessarily in that order, but this teacher is dreams, okay? Dreams will teach you a lot about yourself. When you have a fear, so this is uh, what has come up for me in my life. Anytime that I have a fear or I have something I'm worried about, and what will happen is, you might, it might go into your subconscious, right? Because you're focused on everything else or whatever. And you, and you might not even realize it's a fear, right? And then you'll have a dream, right? And the dream will show you the fear. It will demonstrate it, you know? It'll demonstrate the fear to the point where you feel the fear and you experience it, right? I had an issue with abandonment growing up and, you know, I was an orphan. So my abandonment issues started very young. And from that point, I manifested people in my life who were likely to abandon me. So this issue ran deep with me. I never thought about it as abandonment or this, it's just like sometimes these things happen and we haven't put like labels or anything on it. We don't even realize that this has caused the issue that is now being held in our subconscious. So I had this fear of abandonment, right? And, you know, I meet my soulmate, my husband, and let me tell you, life just didn't work out as far as connecting to people until I met my husband. And so naturally, well, not naturally, I had this subconscious fear that what if my husband abandons me one day? What if he leaves me? So one night I had a dream. And in this dream, my husband was leaving me. And I was crying, please don't leave. And he was like, uh, he was like, I'm leaving, I'm gone. And I remember getting on my, I remember giving up and saying, you're going to leave. It's nothing I can do. It's over. And I remember being very sad and crying. And then I woke up and I was like, my husband's right next to me. Everything's fine. <laughs> and so I tell my husband the dream. And, you know, we both, you know, we discuss our dreams when they come up. And him and I both knew that I was detoxing that fear. So what will happen on this journey as you raise your vibration, you begin to detox things out of the subconscious mind. So my dream taught me that you're holding on to this fear of abandonment. Now you now see how it actually feels if you were to experience it, but it also puts you in perspective. You know your husband would never leave you like that. You know that you guys are, you know, uh, you guys are connected. He loves you, you know. And I had to like really look at it, you know, even looking at it from a logical standpoint, I know that there's nothing that, that, that this will not happen. We, you know, everything is great. You know what I'm saying? And so it taught me a lesson. It taught me I'm holding on to something that I didn't even realize I was holding to that was actually lowering my frequency. So a dream will help you to see that. It will help you. It will help teach you lessons. Right. I remember I went through this hurtful situation and it was very hurtful. Somebody had hurt me really bad. And for some reason, I kept having dreams about this person and we were sitting in a classroom and this person kept showing up to the class. And eventually I would write down my dreams and eventually it all came to me at once what was going on. This person who hurt you was teaching you a lesson. You were in a classroom, right? So that gets to my next teacher, right? And that wasn't actually my next teacher on, in, the, in order, but since, you know, it just kind of flowed that way. The second teacher, <laughs> people who hurt you. Yes, the people in your life. If you had 
family member, parents that were toxic, you know, you had relationships where people like just hurt you for no good reason that had no intentions on being serious with you, that used you like an energy vampire. These things that seem so painful, they teach you a valuable lesson. So I had this experience where I had very toxic people in my life and they treated me so bad. And I allowed it and I thought it was me, you know, and in the end, I got the lesson. The lesson was, look, girl, you need to love yourself. Okay, like you are in control of how people treat you because a boundary when you when a person loves themselves, right? They already know I'm not dealing with I'm not dealing with, you know, drama. I'm not dealing with someone treating me bad. And when you when you make a statement like that, you put up a boundary. You say, no, this ain't coming to me. And those type of energies bounce right back. You see, a negative, toxic person, they need to feed on a weak mind. They need to feed on somebody who who lacks self-esteem, who lacks self-love, right? So your lesson in this, in this world, is notorious for making you feel like, um, making you have low self-esteem, you know, making you not really promote, you know, self-love and healing and stuff, right? So a teacher will come in, a bad, bad, or evil, you know, I don't want to say evil, but a person will come into your life and they'll treat you a certain way and they'll hurt you. And in the end, they're, they were really your teacher all along. They taught you a valuable lesson of self-love, okay? And so the next teacher that will appear in your reality is spiritual people, mentors, right? Now, there is this in proper. When a student is ready, the teacher will appear. So you best believe when a time is right, a teacher will come into your reality. Now, I've had people say in the comments that they say that quote in the comments, when a student is ready, the teacher will appear and they're actually talking about me. I don't claim to be a teacher. I just claim to share my journey. But I do understand you know, from the perspective of sharing your experience, because I have also connected to teachers and mentors in this experience. And they really helped you on your journey. And it wasn't until I was ready that the teacher would appear. So I would say my um, my mentor, Naya, she transitioned from this human experience, but she came at just the right time. I had like if she had a came in the beginning of my awakening while I was still kind of in a religion, I would have never understood anything about being a God. I had to have my first out of body experience. And this one happened naturally. I just went out of body and I realized I was God. I realized that, but I didn't share that because I knew people wouldn't accept it. But I was now at the point where I believe this. I believe that we're God having a human experience. The next thing you know, Naya appeared in my timeline. She had a near-death experience. She knew she was a God having human experience. And she helped me break down my near-death experiences, my out-of-body experiences. She helped me see everything. And she, and just watching her embrace her Godhood, it showed me I had no reason to fear that I could be myself, that I could trust myself. And there are plenty of mentors and teachers out there. And when you're ready, they will appear. If, if I'm the one that appears for you, then we had an agreement and I'm here for you. <laughs> Anyways, the next teacher that will come into your reality, let's see, plants. So plants are a very powerful teacher. Okay. Now, it may seem like they just sitting there being pretty and whatnot, right? But there's many lessons you can learn from a plant. A plant, a plant knows how to let go of things. Every year it loses its leaves and it's not sad about it. It embraces the beauty of just being branches, right? And it just holds on to that beauty. And then when the spring comes, the plant knows that abundance cometh back. 
<laughs> and the plant knows. The plants also pick up on energy, right? The plant will teach you if you're good to the plant, the plant will produce more. If you treat it with love and a high frequency, it'll treat you with love and a high frequency and it'll produce better fruit. There was this one time I was walking down the street and a neighbor, a couple houses down, had a beautiful orange tree. And I said to him, I said, can I please have, pick some of your oranges? He never picked them. They just sat there and would fall to the ground. And he says, go ahead, but don't come back. I was like, what? Like what well, he said to don't come back after I started picking. Don't come back and get any more. That's what he told me. So I went home, cut open the orange and tasted it. The orange was sour. I mean, it was very sour. The orange took on the energy of the neighbor. Sour man, sour fruit. OK, now one could just say, Zen mommy, he just had, you know, sour fruit. Some trees just don't produce good fruit. And I would believe that, right? But he moved out. In the following year, a woman moved in and her family. And after they moved in, I said the same thing. Can I pick some of your oranges? And she was like, oh, go ahead. And, you know, she even filled up a basket and was very happy to give me these oranges. And I'm telling you, this had to be less than a year or two later, right? It was like another season. I cut open that orange and the orange was sweet. So what is the lesson that this tree taught me? That a tree responds to energy. A tree is here to teach us things. You know, if you give love, you receive love. If you give negative energy, you receive it. We are a reflection. It's also a tree is a reflection of us. So they, they harvest I mean, they produce beautiful flowers and fruit in the spring. They let go. And so that's one of the lessons I'm learning in my life is I have to let go of things. You know, that's one of the things just like I watch this nature. And sometimes we get to these times where we hold on to things. Right. I have a bunch of clothes I need to get rid of. I have these things. And I'm like, no, let me hold on to it because I might need this. And I might need that. But these are energy. Right. And in order to advance in this life. You have to be light and free, not to say give up all your stuff. But if it's something you ain't, you haven't used in six months and you're not going to use it in the next six months, you might want to consider maybe I need to see. The thing is, I've also taught about abundance with the plants. Right. So if you're living in a lack frequency and you're not letting go, then you're not going to be able to bring more abundance in. So every year I notice when the trees let go of their leaves, the next year they would be more bushier. They would have more fruit. OK, so plants are definitely teachers. You know, the next teacher. Um, children. Now, children. They are the best teachers. I remember when my son was little, Naya would always tell me my mentor that the children will take us to 5D. <laughs> the children will take the parents to 5D. And, you know, I didn't really understand exactly the details in that, you know, but I trusted that it was true to it, but I hadn't yet seen it for myself. Sometimes when you hear someone talking you never heard before, you can feel if it's right or wrong. You can feel if it's true or not. And I knew that it was some truth to it, but I just didn't understand it. Well, one day I had a, experience <laughs> an ayahuasca experience and I it's hard to share this experience but I've shared it before <laughs> when the plant medicine kicked in <laughs> all the walls in my house began to disappear and in moments I was in another dimension and I remember I had was laying down on the bed right before this transition happened. And I remember, you know, just kind of laying down. As soon as my head hit the back of the bed, I looked around and I was in another dimension. And my son, who was about one years old, was there as well. He ran up to me. Now, we were physical. We were in the physical. 
And he ran up to me and spoke to me telepathically. He said, hi, I can't believe you're here. Right. But he said that all telepathically and he was happy and exciting. And I remember looking in the room like, how is this possible? The walls were gone. Him and I would begin to play and run and, and fly around. We ran for miles when I'm trying to tell you that the room wasn't that big. The room had to be like four feet, you know, like, I mean, not four feet, but like so many feet from the bed to the wall, right? And so there's no way we could have did all that, right? <laughs> and, you know, I, you know, during that experience, I remember Ayahuasca mentioned, this is 5D, you know? And I, I played with him, we hung out, we had such a great time. I picked him up, he was physical, he was all physical. And I, I cannot explain to this day how this was all possible, except for I need to really believe in what I'm talking about, you know? And I, I remember looking at him and he was so playful and fun. And we were playing and in such a high vibration, I began to see that I was right. They will take you to 5D. You know the way to 5D? You know why kids can take you there? Number one, they're going back and forth already. You know, you just don't realize it, that they're really attached more to the all that is than we are. They don't have all that programming stuff. They can shift. I remember when I was younger, I used to shift to other dimensions, right? And they can be in both places. As well. you can, we're omnipresent. So, and the vibration, the frequency for 5D is happiness. Happiness and joy and love. And a child exudes that energy. And if you're playful, shift into this, you have to become more childlike. You know, children, they see the beauty in everything. They think nature is beautiful. They see beauty in everything. And we lose that along the way. This is why I'm a firm believer. It's like we teach our children that they're a God, we embrace their creativity, we embrace what makes them happy. Don't take it away like, like my parents, like my foster parents, they took away everything that we thought was good. And they just show you by existing that, you know, a child, they can just be happy and free. They don't they don't worry about, like we sit up here, we get worried about every little thing. The bills, the da, this is late, the car, my job, blah, blah, blah. Um, this TV show went ter had a terrible ending, and the children they they have a un they are unattached from that, and so we have to embrace the child within us even more. You know, take that time to play with your child. Take that time to just have fun. Use your imagination. Okay, me and my son, we create whole worlds in our imagination, right? And I bet you these worlds exist. We're gonna see these worlds <laughs> after we shift out of here, <laughs> and. They are a powerful teacher. So allow yourself to embrace that. If you have a child, embrace that. If you or work with children or around children, have children, family members, you know, embrace that. You know, listen to what they have to tell you. They'll teach you so many things, you know. They they point out truth. I remember my son, and you know, this is not really <laughs> my son, he was the other we were watching this show this movie and it was about a queen you know you know the whole king and queen and the, the hierarchy and the, the rich people and the peasants and so he the queen was at the table eating all by herself and there were men lined up on both sides just sitting there waiting to to serve help her serve or whatever they were her servants and my son looked and he said he said, why are they just standing there like, I'll just stand here for you. And I just started busting out laughing because I started to see like this reality, like they have been really programmed to accept stuff like that, you know, like to, to have this, this separation from the elite and the non-elite or from the rich and the poor or the commoner or the peasant, right? And, you know, as a child, he sees that we're all God. We're all souls having experience, human experience. So why are we letting that soul act, give away his self just to serve me? And see, as a child, he pointed that out. And this is something like every day in our human life we overlook. We still have a king and queen in England and everything, right? 
and, and people still be like, oh, let me bow down to the queen. You know, it's a game they're playing. It's an illusion. All right. So that was a lesson I learned from my son. Anyways, um, that was the five teachers that will come into your life. But while I was talking, I realized that I may have forgotten another teacher. <laughs> and that teacher is animals. Right. And so that goes along kind of with plants, you know. Animals can teach you a lot of lessons. If you have got uh, dogs or cats or or birds, you know, and they they are teachers. They show you so much, you know. I remember that, you know, the 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 animals, you know, they're kind of influenced by the environments and areas there. And you know, I don't know why I'm telling this part, but this was an interesting thing I learned. So. When we were in our old house, a baby bird fell out of a nest. And the mama bird, I guess because they don't have wings, they just consider the baby a weak child and they'll just let it die. But it was in our backyard. And my husband, he's an empath, and he saw this bird and he said, there's a bird here, we got to take care of it. And so we got the bird, we warmed him up. You know, I called the people to come get the bird and whatnot. And when I called them, they said, we don't save all every birds. We only save American birds. And so I said, oh, okay. She said, can you send me a picture? We can figure out what type of bird it is, right? And so uh, the bird that it was, it was possibly an American bird, but it was also possibly a European bird. And she said, since this bird looks so similar to an American bird, we're going to go ahead and pick it up because we don't, you know, we want to make sure that we save the American birds. And she explained to me that had this been the European bird, she said that that bird, this is very interesting. <laughs> she said that bird, instead of building its own nest, it goes to a bird's who has already built their nest and it will actually attack them and force them to leave and take over their whole nest and then start their family. And it immediately hit me that this energy that these birds, these animals took on was the energy of the, the people back in the day who had this colonizer energy. You know, you know, we all know the story. You know, I don't like focusing on it or anything because that was many timelines away. But from, you know, the other side of the world, from Europe somewhere, a group of people came to America and they began to colonize it. And the same group of people colonized other countries. And, you know, it was violent, some of the things that happened. They basically took over a land that was already inhabited by people and they took over that land fought those people and made it their own land and now we have a bird that plays out this same energy okay so i thought that was interesting i want to share that i don't know if that was a teaching moment maybe it was i guess it kind of is a teaching i guess uh what would it be teaching me it would be teaching me that our environment responds to who we are and it did teach me a lesson that energy, energy matches. Energy is transferred and it will match the frequency of everything around it. So the people were in a, a frequency of wanting to take over people's land and homes and colonizing it. So also the animal, the bird there was also doing that. Now, there isn't a bird in, from what I understand there wasn't a bird in you know, America that actually does that. So I thought that was an interesting observation and just goes on to say that this whole, you know, what I'm talking about, the whole teacher thing, you have many teachers in your life. So embrace them when they come into your life and take all you can as far as learning. And if you don't see the message now, it's like you see something happen, right? Maybe the tree, something happens, a branch falls off or it's limp, you know, it, try to see what is it trying to communicate to me? What is it trying to tell me? There's a lesson in everything. Anyways, thanks for watching. Namaste. Don't forget to sign up for my email and make like, share and comment. You know, let's get the word out to connect to our soul tribe of other people who know their creator gods having a human experience.